Okay, a copper plate of thickness 1 cm. Okay, again, this is a non SI unit. Okay, I mark it out. Okay, you need to change to meter. Okay, right. Okay, uh, it's sealed to a, a steel plate of thickness 10 cm. Okay, this one again is a non SI unit. You need to change to meter. Okay, as shown in the figure. Okay, the temperature of exposed uh, surfaces of the copper and steel plates are 30 degrees Celsius and 15 degrees Celsius. So 30 degrees Celsius, 15 degrees Celsius, respectively, determine the temperature of the interface. Uh, interface is this. Yeah, this is the interface. Okay, uh, this is the interface uh, between the copper and steel plate. Uh, so we want to find the temperature at the joint yeah, or in interface. So this is the temperature we want to find. Yeah. Okay. Um, so what do we have? Yeah, we have the thermal conductivity of copper and also the thermal conductivity of steel. Okay. Uh, so again, um, okay, what about this thickness? Thickness, okay, 1 cm and 10 cm. Okay, this is the delta X. Delta X for uh, uh, respective uh, metal, yeah? Delta X. Okay, so, uh, okay, this is a copper and this is made of steel. Okay, this is insulated. Uh, as you can see here, this is important. Okay, they've got insulator. Uh, this, um, it is bell insulated, yeah? Covered by insulator. So, when we see this insulated, what can we say? There is no heat loss. Uh, there is no... There is no heat loss. Uh, no heat loss. Uh, okay, no heat loss. So, important thing is when they are insulated, we can say it can achieve, can achieve a steady, sorry, can achieve a steady state. Uh, okay, can achieve steady state means what? Means you can use this formula. The rate of heat flow uh, through the copper through the copper will be equal to the rate of heat flow through the steel. Uh, through the steel. Okay? Uh, because all the heat that flow from copper will flow into steel. Okay? All the copper flow inside the all the all the heat Heat that flow inside the copper will flow inside the steel. Uh, no, no heat loss. Okay, another thing is, uh, which one is the initial temperature? Heat flow in which direction? Uh, it must flow to the right. Yeah, it must flow from hot to cold. As we can see, this thirty degrees Celsius is hot. Fifteen degree is cold. Uh, so that the heat must flow from hot to cold. So we can say this. Uh, for this 30 degrees Celsius, is considered as initial temperature. And uh, this temperature at the joint should be the final temperature. Final temperature for copper. Okay. Uh, hold on a second. Okay. And um, for steel, for steel, this temperature at the interface should be the initial temperature. Okay. Should be the initial temperature. And for the 15 degrees Celsius, it should be the final temperature for steel. Okay. Uh, because um, yeah, heat flow from hot to cold. So 30 is the initial for copper. Then this T is, is the final temperature for copper. And then this T is the initial temperature for steel. And 15 degrees Celsius is the final temperature for steel. Huh? Heat flow. Uh, this is this. Uh, this is the heat. Okay, flow from hot to cold. Okay, this is important. Huh? All these are important. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, so we need to find the temperature T. Okay, we need to find the temperature T. So how? Okay, we need to find the temperature at the interface. Uh, so let's do it. Yeah, let's do it. So since it is well insulated. Okay, well insulated so it can achieve steady state the rate of heat flow is the same for both metal uh, the rate of heat flow is the same for both metal so i can use this formula uh, all right so let's do the 
part A. Yeah? Let's do part A. Okay. Uh, so question A. Okay, rate of heat flow in copper equal to the rate of heat flow in the steel. Cause uh, well insulated. So we use the formula dQ dt equal to dQ dt equal to negative Ka dt over dx. Uh, this is for copper. Okay, this is for copper. And the same goes to the steel. Negative Ka dt over dx. Uh, this is for the steel. And uh, we can see the cross-sectional area is the same, isn't it? Cross-sectional is the same for both copper and the steel. So we can cancel the area. And then the negative sign also common. We can cancel. And then, uh, but the difference is the thermal conductivity. Uh, thermal conductivity of copper and the steel, they are different. Okay, and then... Um, uh, so we have the delta x already, 1 cm, 10 cm, you need to change to meter, okay? Uh, okay, delta t. So delta t is the, delta t, this one is the change of temperature. Again, I can, what I want to say is uh, this delta t can either in uh, Kelvin or degree Celsius because uh, the change in uh, 1 Kelvin is equivalent to the change of uh, 1 degree Celsius, yeah? The change in temperature. This thing we already know, yeah. So no need to change the degree Celsius to Kelvin, yeah. No need. Uh, but the centimeter here need to change to meter, yeah. Okay, so we can substitute all the values. Let's substitute all the values. This is the thermal conductivity of copper. Let's put in three eight five, and then uh, this is the final temperature minus initial temperature. Okay, remember. Uh, this delta T is the final minus initial, yeah? Final minus initial temperature. So for copper, it is uh, final is the T and initial is 30. So we use final minus initial, T minus 30, yeah? Okay, so it's T minus 30 uh, over the delta X. Uh, delta x is this one centimeter so change to meter it is divided by 100 you get 0 0.01 okay and then for thermal conductivity for steel it is uh, 50.2 50.2 and then uh, and then we have uh, final final for steel is 15 initial is t so it's 15 minus t yeah final minus initial 15 minus T. Uh, okay. And then the, the distance travel is 10 centimeter. So divided by 100 is 0 0.1. 0 0.1 meter. Okay. Uh, so we have built the equation already. So time to get the T. Uh, time to get the T. So let's calculate. Okay. Uh, this is my working. Okay, just uh, multiply here, yeah? expand it, and finally I get the temperature is uh, 29.81, yeah? Uh, we are using degree Celsius, yeah? We are using, degree, all these are degree Celsius, so this temperature is in degree Celsius. Okay, so is the answer correct? Yes, it's correct. Okay? Uh, it is exactly uh, between yeah twenty twenty nine point eight one is between thirty and fifteen uh, in between there yeah between the temperature okay uh okay so that's the answer now I want to find question B question B what is the amount of heat flow yeah amount of heat flowing from copper plate to steel plate in one minute if the cross sectional area for both plates is a uh, 50 centimeter square and no energy losses uh, to the surroundings uh, because this is insulated yeah uh, this uh, no energy losses to the surroundings uh, means uh, insulated uh, yeah is mean the same thing for this one that means can achieve 
steady state, the rate of heat flow in copper equal to the rate of heat flow in the steel. Okay, so what the question asks is uh, he want to find the amount of heat flowing. Uh, amount of heat flowing. Uh, this one, amount of heat flowing. That means uh, the question wants to find Q. Uh, he wants to find Q. Yeah? The heat energy flowing from copper to steel in one minute. Uh, given the time taken, uh, this is the... Uh, this is the del the del the time taken delta t, uh, yeah. So delta t, uh, delta t is uh, for question for this question B. The time taken is one minute. Uh, one minute is sixty second. Okay, and then it give you the cross sectional area for both plates. Uh, this is the area, yeah. Remember the unit you must change, yeah. Centimeter square to meter square. Okay, so now how I'm going to do this? Uh, I so I surely use the the formula. Uh, question B. So I use the the dQ over dt equal to negative k a dt over dx. Uh, so what I need to find is this uh, i need to find the d the dq yeah i need to find this yeah dq so uh, okay i rewrite the formula okay i need to find the q okay uh, this is the time taken delta t okay um the heat flow uh, in copper we are using copper is it copper yeah from copper to steel plate uh, actually, the heat flow in the copper and heat flow in the steel, they are the same. Uh, from copper to steel plate. Yeah, they should be the same. So, if you use copper, remember, if you use copper, uh, then you use, uh, you use uh, the thermal conductivity of copper and temperature gradient for copper. If you use steel, then you use uh, uh, K for steel and DTDX for steel. Uh, so you choose either one don't mix up yeah if you use the k for copper uh, then the dtdx you use also the copper one because they have different k and different dtdx okay uh, but if you use if you use uh, steel you also can use steel uh, then make sure your t uh, temperature gradient dtdx also use steel uh, if you use uh, copper, then this one also you use copper. Okay. Uh, by the way, uh, the DTDX, uh, DQDT for copper and the steel, they are the same. Do you see that? Uh, they have the same rate of heat flow. They only have different K, different temperature gradient. But the rate of heat flow is the same. Uh, that's why you want to use, uh, you want to, uh, this one, okay. Uh, what, I, what, what I want to say is, uh, uh, the, uh, so this one is you either use the copper or you use the rate of heat flow for the steel. Uh, because why? Because they have the same. They, they are the same rate of heat flow. Uh, same rate of heat flow. So if you use K for copper, the DTDX also use copper. If you use K for steel, if you use K for steel, uh, then you use the DTDX. Uh, DTDX for steel. Understand? Okay, now I just use the copper. Okay, I don't bother so much. Okay, so I just use the copper. The time taken is uh, one minute. Time taken is one minute. So one minute is 60 seconds. Okay, and then uh, the copper, I just use the copper, which is uh, 385. Okay, copper is 385. Cross sectional area, uh, uh, both have the same cross sectional area, yeah. Both have the same uh, cross sectional area. So 50 cm square. Uh, this one you need to change your SI unit. 50 centimeter square. Centi has a square. So remember, it's a uh, exponent negative two or negative four. Is it negative two or negative four? Uh, since you have a square, so it become negative four, not negative two. Okay. Uh, so uh, this one already changed to meter square. 
And then now DT, DT we look inside the copper, okay, because we use K for copper. This DT, the change of temperature also look inside copper. So the copper is uh, from uh, 30 to T. Uh, so we use final minus initial, yeah, final temperature minus initial temperature. Final this T, just now we got the T already just now, it's 29.81. Uh, just write that down over there. 29.81, write down over there. 29.81 okay uh, degree Celsius so remember uh, this DT is a uh, final minus initial again this change of temperature is a uh, final temperature minus initial temperature uh, so for for copper for copper uh, this 29.81 is the final temperature so we use final minus initial 29.81 minus 30. Uh, 29, excuse me, final minus initial temperature. Uh, can maintain as degree Celsius, never mind. Okay, and then the change of length is uh, 1 centimeter, change, to change the unit to meter, so it's 0 0.01 meter. 0 0.01 meter. Okay, uh, divide by 100. Okay, so I should get the answer already. So let's calculate now. Okay, so my heat flow, I got 2194.5 Joule. Okay, so that's the heat flow. Am I correct? Uh-huh. Uh, hold on a second. Okay, uh, the answer is a little bit different. Okay, it is because about the temperature that I use. Okay, uh, I use uh, the T equal to 29.81. Okay, I use the T, uh, T is uh, 29.81, uh, so I get this, this answer. But this is correct. Okay, if you put the T equal to um, the answer given is 29.8. Yeah, if you just put the uh, 29.8 degrees Celsius, then surely your heat flow, you will get the answer 2310 Joule. Uh, just differ by a little bit of temperature. Okay, the little bit of temperature will change the heat. Yeah, uh, so but both answer, both answer is correct. Lah, okay, because my temperature is more accurate, more accurate. And I get get a more accurate uh, heat flow. Huh? So this answer is actually correct. Yeah, it's actually uh, due to my temperature. Okay. So uh, that's all for this question. Okay. See you guys.